Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday, the 4th of August 2023. It is the day before match day, the day before the start of the new season, where we have so much promise, potential, hope, dreams and ambitions. And by 5.55 tomorrow, they could have all turn to dust and as we see the team play in the first game of the season and we think oh dear it's like that is it so but before we get into talking about tomorrow's game we have this we've got some news articles from the club but this is from millwithc.co.uk so obviously at the last possible moment they've launched the away kit and they'll be wearing this tomorrow so that's why they've launched it here so it isn't a surprise uh, for the um, watching public tomorrow. So who's that in white? Oh, that's me. Oh, that's on your away kit. Yeah. So Mill Football Club is delighted to reveal its brand new away kit for the 23-24 season. The strip is, made, uh, is manufactured by Aria, whom the Lions announced a technical partnership with earlier this year. It's sponsored by the club's principal partner, Husky Chocolate. Modeled by Kevin Nisbet and Mill Lioness is Chloe Burr. The kit begins with a white shirt with a black round and neck collar with gold vertical lines and trim, plus black tips on the sleeves and continues with black shorts and white socks with black tips. The kit will be worn the first time at the Riverside Stadium on Saturday as the Lions begin their Skybet Championship campaign at Mills Bra. Plus at various away fixtures in 23-24, details of when the kit will be available to purchase from the Lions store along with pricing will be announced in due course so yeah they the players have it uh, no one else has um it's all right i mean i don't it's you can't really see on these pictures but so you've got the white line and then you've got this kind of gray line but what it is in there is some kind of weird pattern like an archipelago or archipelago um, I have no idea what the hell that is, but so yeah, but I think I'm not sure if I saw them, or I'm pretty sure the shorts for this do look good. They're black. When was the last time we had black shorts? A long time ago. Uh, oh no, no actually, didn't we have them last season in the yellow? Probably, but they were they had um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what am I talking about? We had it in the last season. Yeah, I think that's going to look good. Like a, like a, pictures is pictures. Until you, you go up and see it and touch it, you don't really know what it's like. Um, so, yeah, that is our away kit. No rhyme or reason, just eh, random. So there you go. Uh, moving on to... This. So, the numbers on those shirts, what are they going to be? Um, basically the same as before. I think the only major change is Romain Essay. He's had his number cut in half. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. So, this is from millwc.co.uk, the club's official website. Mill confirm 23 24 squad numbers. Mill Football Club can now confirm its squad numbers ahead of the 23 24 campaign. New signings Kevin Nisbet, 7. Joe Bryan, 15, Tija Sarkic, 20, uh, Kasper Denor, uh, 24, and Wes Harding, 45, are added to the list. Um, whilst one other change seems Romain SA moving from 50 to 25. Uh, take a look at the full list of 23 24 squad numbers below. George Long, number one. Not anymore, not anymore, he ain't. Uh, Danny McNamara, Murray Wallace, uh, Sean Hudson, uh, five is Jay Cooper, six, six is George Evans, Kevin is number seven, Billy Mitchell, eight, Tom Bratcham, nine, Zion Fleming, ten, Tyler Burry, fourteen. So, still here. The move to Oxford hasn't gone through, the loan move. Um, yeah, what's he waiting for? Is he waiting for someone else to come in? Maybe. Maybe he's waiting for teams to play and then for them to realise, oh shit, we need, we need a certain type of player. 
you can then say, hey, that's me. Do you, do you want me to sign for you? Um, so maybe he's waiting for that because obviously we do have a month left. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, if the deal does go through, it's probably going to be a last day deal. Um, Joe Bryan, 15. Ryan Leonard, 18. Duncan Watmore, 19. Um, and then on and on and on. So there you go. I'm not going to go through them all. Interestingly, though, so we do have Alex Mitchell, 26. Um, and then Nino Adamalico, 46. So this, I believe, so this looks like this is the first team squad, even though they've told Tyler Burry to. That he'll be leaving and uh, he's training with the under 21s and playing with them as well. And by the way, I haven't brought it up, I just remembered they have a game tomorrow. I told you the other day, game at Hornchurch. Uh, if you can't, if, you, if you're that way, at all. but uh, hopefully they don't get fucked by the weather because the weather is tomorrow supposed to be really bad. It's coming in for the wet from the west, so it might not mess with the uh, game on the riverside. Too much by the time three o'clock kickoffs come comes in. In terms of the game at Hornchurch, it might be a bit of a mud bath, a swirling uh, dervish of a game. Interestingly, to note in that squad there, if this is the first team squad, we have one, two, three, four goalkeepers in the first team squad. So, like I said before. It wouldn't surprise me if Gara has two goalkeepers on the bench. If we have three goalkeepers, he always takes three goalkeepers um, to in the mat match day squad. But obviously, where the subs were before seven, like you, you, that would be absolutely stupid to put two subs on uh, goalkeeping subs on the bench. But it wouldn't surprise me if he does that um, because they do bring an extra one to help with training. So. There you go. Will we will we have the nine subs? Will we have the full complement of subs? Um, I, I don't think he's just going to bring a random under twenty one player with him, throw him to the bench. This is literally is here the first team squad. Um, so there you go. And not only that, so obviously this, this is just the first team squad. There are other players who have professional contracts at the club. Uh, players who are in the under 21s and got their first pro deals they have squad numbers as well but they're not being listed here. um so yeah but that will usually be in the 30s and something so there you go there's the numbers that will be on the back of that uh white and black kit at tomorrow's game uh now yesterday the fans forum was hosted in harry's bar and we now have more pictures of Harry's bar, what it looks like. Uh, we don't have much details of the questions that were asked at the fans forum. But it seems to be well attended and well packed out. Uh, so Mill hosted its fans forum in the refurbished Harry's bar on Thursday night, taking place between 6 and 8pm in the first hour of the evening. Manager Gary Wright took questions from the floor, including queries over the playing squad, transfer market and the season ahead, amongst others. Uh, after the break, it was the turn of CEO Steve Cavanaugh who answered questions on a number of subjects, such as the Lions' new training ground proposals, uh, the Lions' store, the pre-match fan experience, uh, the tragic passing of John Berylson, and more. Take a look at the gallery from the fans forum below. So there you are, all getting tucked in, tuck into the Shepherd Neem drinks, except for those at the table there. They've got bottles of water in front of them. So there you go, going around. And we're back to the start. So there you go. Now, here we go. This is it. Moving on to southernnews.co.uk preview of tomorrow's game. Uh, Middlesbrough versus Millwall. Lions start season with difficult test up north. Uh, Mill have not won at the Riverside in their last seven visits. Yes, more on that later. Uh, Mill will kick off their new season away at Middlesbrough and a daunting uh, opening day trip up north. The Lions have not won at the Riverside Stadium since 2014, but will be looking to test themselves 
going to team that are expected to be in and around the promotion chase. While Mill will suffer final day heartbreak by losing 4-3 to Blackburn and missing out on the flowers, Barrow did make it into the top six uh, shake-up as they target a return to the Premier League after six years away. Uh, but they produced a pair of surprisingly tepid performances in the playoff semi-finals against Coventry City, losing 1-0 on aggregate. That failure alone did not overshadow the amazing job done by Michael Carrick in his first job in football management. Uh, the former Manchester United midfielder took over for Chris Wilder in October after a poor start to the season. Carrick engineered 18 wins in the remaining 30 league games to help Middlesbrough confidently stride into the top six. Uh, central to that turnaround was Juba Akpom, who was named the league's player of the season after scoring 24 goals uh, under Carrick and 28 in total. Uh, but the attacker looks likely to miss the only day after injuries kept him from appearing in any pre-season games. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, young striker Josh Coburn and midfielder Johnny Halson could also be absent. Oh dear. Uh, well, we'll have to see. Uh, Carrick said following the final friendly against Auxerre. There's no hiding from it. They haven't trained with the group yet, so we'll have to make that assessment as the week goes on to the next week. Uh, Akpom's injury makes Mill's assignment easier, but Mill's were still have plenty of threats, including. Uh, in the form of their new players. Besides signing QPR goalkeeper Senny Dieng, the goalkeeper who lit in tons of goals last season, uh, the club have gone for youthful but inexperienced stars in this window. They have brought, uh, bought 21-year-old Brentford B forward Alex Gilbert, attacking midfielder Sam Silvera uh, from Central Coast Mariners and Manchester City winger Morgan Rogers, who turned 21 last week. Uh, it is also worth keeping an eye on Middlesbrough Academy ace Hayden Hackney, who was one of the club's shining lights last season for midfield. Borough stars could be a handful for the middle defence, which will likely include Danny McNamara, who will make his undrip appearance for the club. Uh, Duncan Watmore will also be looking for game time as he faces his former club for the first time, but George Honeyman will be missing after picking up an injury in the opening pre season game against Gillingham. Uh, Mill boasts an impressive recent opening day record, losing only two of their last ten first championship matches of the season. And the Lions will be looking to rebuild on a largely encouraging pre-season, which saw them win two, draw one and lose one of their matches in front of fans. A new signing, Kevin Isbitt, who arrived from Hibernia in June, has so far been the start of the summer. With five goals from three pre-season friendly games. Youngsters remain SA and a Domo Maku. Have also enjoyed plenty of praise for their contributions during the off-season. Of more pressing concern for Millwall uh, was the future of Zion Fleming after Burnley spent the first half of the summer pursuing him. For now, he remains at the den and will be hoping to reach uh, last season's incredibly high levels after a fairly different pre-season. The task for Millwall remains the same: get back into the top flight for the first time since 1990. Uh, this season marks the 139th season of Millwall's existence as a football club. In the 97th consecutive year, the London side have been in the Football League. Uh, with talent and goals in the team and the memory of last season's near miss still present, Gary Rowan and his players will hope it is a year to remember. Indeed, indeed. Um, so, here we go. As before, like last season, if you were watching the videos then, this is from a website called 11v11.com, literally the numbers 11, not the word 11, 11v11.com. Um, it is the historical head-to-head -head record between Millwall and Middlesbrough, and they seem to have fixed it, so I can now uh, adjust it. So we have, um, I've sorted it to Middlesbrough versus Millwall, so Middlesbrough home games. And as you can see here, it is an absolute sea of red. An absolute sea of red between 1969 and 1994. Uh, we our best result was one draw in about 20 games uh, or 15. Um, absolutely abysmal record. Uh, we only started winning up there. I think when they moved into their new ground, which you know it's kind of weird. Um, but it happens all the time when when teams move into new grounds. Uh, they get a bit shaky. It's kind of weird. Their form goes out the window. It happened to Arsenal. It happened to us. Um, it's happening to a few teams. It's quite. It's like clockwork. If you move into a new ground, it's a totally different ground. Um, we 
kind of struggle. So I think that's what happened there. I think 2010, or they were struggling. They got relegated from the Premier League. They had a bit of a nightmare where they, I think around about that time, they, they reached two cup finals in the same season that they got relegated. Um, it's just a weird, weird moment in Miller's history. And then we seem to have a, a streak where we won and drew against them. And then normal service will resume straight after that. Last time out was a narrow 1-0 defeat. Uh, <clears throat> before that, it was a 1-1 draw. Before that, it was a 3-0 defeat. But again, before that, two 1-1 two draws in 2019, January and August. Two different seasons. Um, so, not looking too bad if you just strip it to the last five games. If the last five games we've lost two and drawn three. haven't beaten them. But if you go through the whole history of all these games, up at the, the up at Middlesbrough, we won once in 1967. Congratulations if you saw that. You were there for that game. And then in 2010, 2013, 2014, so we've only won four times away at Middlesbrough in all of these games. So that doesn't bode well for tomorrow's game, does it? Um, not really. And I would say we've had one draw that's, that's a nil-nil draw. All of the other draws were one ones. So we probably need to score. If we do need, if we do score, it looks like we might be able to get a draw. If we don't score, if we fail to score, if we get a zero against our, our main, you got to be thinking that we're gonna we're gonna um, lose because we've only had one nil nil draw up there. Although maybe it's time for another nil nil draw. Maybe it's overdue in terms of. Uh, fixture regularity in the stats and the numbers and stuff. Um, in terms of heavy, heavy hits, uh, 4-1 in the FA Cup, the first game we went up there. 4-2 uh, in 1988. Um, so that would have been in the top league, yeah. Uh, who, who went to that one in the uh, old first division? Um, and 4-2 again in February 1994. So. There have been occasions when we get we got heavily whacked up. We got we got a couple of free ones, a two free three free nils. So yeah, it doesn't look good in terms of winning the game, but a draw is very real possibility. So let's move on to this. Who's com head to head. Uh here we go. Last six games I've just shown you. Um let me sort. This is all over the place. In terms of games up at Middlesbrough, the last six games, three wins from, three defeats from nil, all three draws, but we've only scored three goals, and those goals were in those draws, in those one-one draws. So, like I said, if we fail to score, it looks like we're going to lose because uh, nil-nil is not a regular occurrence there. Uh, match facts on the right hand side Middlesbrough have seen under two and a half goals in eight of their last nine matches against Millwall in all competitions uh, there have been under two and a half goals scored in Middlesbrough's last four games uh, yeah so they f they're struggling to score although it's like I said it's a different season now It's and they're tr struggling to score and Chew Rackpom's not playing so and they're playing with kids apparently that they've signed expensive kids that they've signed not one, only one of them has come through their academy. Hayden Hackney. Uh, there have been over two and a half goals scored in the last three games. Yeah, at the end of last season, we were scoring a lot and conceding a lot as well. 4-3, uh, anyone, on the last day? Huh? So there's not really much else to go into. Obviously, there's no form yet. Uh, there's no table. There was a game tonight. Um... Yeah, Russell Martin. What is what is this guy doing to football? Um, pass success percentage is through the roof. With them just passing around at the back. Absolutely dire fucking shit to watch. And they narrowly beat Sheffield Wednesday 
Lee Gregory scoring for Sheffield Wednesday. Good luck to him. Except against us. Don't score against us, please. Um, so, yeah, like I said, there's no form. There's no table. It's just a, head, just a history. And recent form. They've got this here. This is their preview from whoscored.com. They've got some kind of lineups. So here we go. You can see here. Look at this. There's a really bad uh, injury list for uh, um, Minnesota. Um, we've only got we've got George Honeyman. They don't list him here, but so we've so we've read the match facts. So let's get on to the prediction. Uh, Michael Carrick's remarkable start to life as a first team manager wasn't accompanied by a fairy tale ending last season. And as Middlesbrough were beaten by Coventry in a KG two-legged playoff semi-final matchup, the T siders have been largely underwhelming in their summer transfer dealings. But this squad should be strong enough to mount another playoff challenge. Mill have acted in a typically astute manner throughout the summer transfer window, adding proven championship quality and the exciting talents of Casper and all Kevin Nisbet to their ranks. The Lions have fallen at the final hurdle in recent seasons and missed out on a top six finish on the final day last time out. And they predict that tomorrow's game will be Middlesbrough 1, Millwall 1. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, moving on to David Pratt and SkySports.com. What's the prediction here? Oh, we're at the top. So last season ended in disappointment for Middlesbrough, but they still made fantastic progress under Michael Carrick. And it will be fascinating to see how they look after he has had a full pre-season to work with his side. Uh, speaking of disappointment, dot, 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 uh, Mill really shot themselves in the foot in how they missed out on the playoffs. But they have held on to their star man for now and have done some good business so far. Gary Rout will be desperate to go on better this time around and finally make that jump into the top six. They will, I feel, start with a loss at the Riverside though. And they predict 2-0 to Middlesbrough. Yeah, I don't I, I, I literally have no idea. Uh, we got a bit it's, you need a bit of luck. We got a bit of luck. They got many injuries. Um, this might be a good time to play them. Um there's obviously we got the funny business with the new rules. Hopefully you don't, you don't miss your train home when the game finishes at 6.15. Um, um, yellow cards, red cards for kicking the ball for time wasting, like kicking the ball away, stupid stuff like that. Hopefully not to us, maybe to them. That might be helpful to us. Um, as you can see, recently 1-1 one -one draw has not been impossible. We've done that three times in the last five trips up there. Um, so they've gone for us not scoring. I think we, sh we should be scoring. Um, especially with I don't know why they signed the QPR goalkeeper. It doesn't seem very good to me. Um, I think it's slim pickings for goalkeepers though. We've got four of them. So, I think we're going to score. So, it's going to be a meal or at least one. Can we score two? Maybe. Um, can we keep a clean sheet? Highly unlikely. Maybe we can. Will the new goalie start? Will he have a bit of communication with his uh, defenders? Uh, will we play with the stupid three at the back, no one in the middle, so the Middlesbrough can just run straight through the middle of us? Don't know. Don't know. Um, will Maku and Essa come on off the pit, oh, off the bench to do something? Um, I don't see us winning. I do think we can draw, and this is a crazy league with crazy things happening all the time. Um, so I'm leaning, I'm leaning towards either 2-1 to them, 2-2. Two, two. So it's probably going to be a toss-up. Um, probably 
probably go for 2 2. I think it's going to be 2 2. Um, but I could quite clearly see it be 2 1 to them, maybe a penalty somewhere in there. Has there ever been a 2 2 up there? I don't think so. The draws have been a 1 0, and all the other draws have been 1 1. When we when we did one win up there, we won one nil, one nil, two one, two one. So maybe it might be two one to us. Um but yeah, I'm gonna go two two, which is a result that hasn't happened in this fixture before. Which is kind of crazy, but um yeah. It's a two two, but it could probably be two two one to either side. And that's my prediction. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.